Bill Showers is signing off after 50 years, and tonight we're honoring his legendary career. To think that boy from the bottom has reached the point where he gets a, a street name now. It, it touches me deeply. We'll journey back in time to his early days before broadcasting and see how he overcame adversity when the hate mail would come in. And would become an Alabama Hall of Fame broadcaster. I don't deserve this, but I'm not giving it back. <laughs> yes, he deserves it. Hello, everyone. I'm Roseanne Hayden. And I'm Peter Albrecht. Thanks for watching our 30-minute special on Mel Shower's retirement. Mel was one of the first African-American reporters at this station and in this television market. When Mel went on the air as a reporter at WKRG-TV in 1974, there were very few black faces on local television, and some people wanted to keep it that way. But Mel did not let that affect him as he rose through the ranks, inspiring a lot of people along the way. As a boy growing up in Mobile, Mel Showers enjoyed watching the news. I used to watch Huntley and Brinkley. Walter Cronkite, I thought a lot of them, and I used to say to myself, I said, wonder if I could ever do that one day. But I couldn't look at it realistically because I didn't see any dark skinned people on the air doing that. In fact, Mel says there was just one black local on air role model. The only on air black person leading up to when I started as a booth announcer was Estelle Payton. Payton served as sidekick to Connie B. Hope during cooking segments on the Midday News. And I used to think so much of her because she was my complexion and she was on TV. Up until then, you know, you didn't see any black person in this local area on TV. And there she was. This monument near downtown symbolizes Mobile's relative unity during the civil rights era. Mobile avoided much of the racial conflict that divided other southern cities. And Mel Shower says it was the same social strategy that led to his being hired by WKRG in 1969. WKRG became proactive. They said, we're not going to have any picketing outside our station, what have you. We're going to go out and find us somebody black. Mel was hired among qualified African-American students at South Alabama as a booth announcer and became a news field reporter a few years later, joining a few other African-American reporters on air at the time, like the late Bob Brazier. But most blacks feels it runs deeper than that. Early on, Mel did stories on racial inequality in Mobile's police and fire departments. There is some question locally as to who's responsible for making affirmative action work. And sadly, covered his fair share of cross burnings. And many blacks in Pensacola have warned of retaliation. At that time, burning crosses was pretty common. And they were burning crosses all over the place, all over the TV5 viewing area. Mel says his early reporting days had some challenges, but were generally positive. I don't know if the, you would call it difficult because you had so many people pulling for you. You had so much support from the black community especially. And former co-workers say it was Mel's personality and demeanor that won over many people who may not have been ready to see black reporters on television. There was a additional pressure, let's face it, on, on something like that. And he handled it with such class. I, I always, I noted that. Current African-American leaders in the city say Mel had a huge influence on them. He has been a role model to me because I saw African-American on the news uh, bringing the news to the citizens of Mobile. Particularly as a, uh, an African-American male, seeing him in that prominent role, uh, he's touched the lives of thousands of young men who saw him and said to themselves that they could aspire to that level of professionalism because Mel Shower, somebody from our own community, was able to do it. Mel became the Mobile Pensacola TV market's first black evening news anchor in 1990. It was a big moment in the African-American community. I didn't believe I could see no African-American as an anchor. It moved Mel up to the anchor. I thought the earth moved. <laughs> and then he just became a standard fate for us to see during the news. Just outstanding man. 
Yes, he is. And yesterday, the National Association of Black Journalists named Mel Showers the 2019 Journalist of Distinction. He will receive the award during the NABJ convention in Miami on August 10th. And last week on May 14th, the city of Mobile honored Mel for his, an amazing career. And it came as a huge surprise to Mel, and it's a moment he says he'll remember forever. That the month of May 2019 be designated as Mel Showers Month <laughs> in the city of Mobile in honor of his distinguished service. It was quite a day for Mel Showers at Government Plaza. May was declared Mel Showers Month. If you could read the announcements for the day as your first official act as mayor, it would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> and Mel was even made mayor for the day. And he didn't even have to campaign for the job. There's nobody happier than Sandy about Mel being mayor for the day. I certainly hope that uh, I get the approval of all of the council members and the mayor. <laughs> mayor Mel took care of a little city business, but it was the city council that had the big surprise for Mel, renaming the intersection of broadcast and television where the WKRG studio sits. So it will be honorary Mel Showers Drive and honorary <laughs> Mel Showers Avenue. Wow. Mm -hmm. We wanted something that would live on in his honor. And just think about how many times Mel has driven to WKRG on Broadcast Drive and Television Avenue. Just think over the years how many times that's been. So honoring him by putting his name on those two streets that lined up there by WKRG, I think is a really good way to preserve that memory and honor him. Mel was certainly touched by the gesture. I want to thank all of you so very, very much. This, this means so much to me. Uh, for those of you who are from the bottom, which All is right. where I grew up in Mobile, yes, sir. Yes. in the bottom, mm -hmm. and to think that a boy from the bottom has reached a point where he gets a, a street name now. That's a blessing. It, it touches me deeply. Mel was also recognized at the state capitol this month. He received a legislative commendation. It was introduced by State Representative Adeline Clark and was co-sponsored by the entire Mobile County delegation. And today, Congressman Bradley Byrne honored Mel at the nation's capitol. You can see both the honors in their entirety on our website, WKRG.com. Just search for 50 years celebrating Mel Showers. One of the stories that affected me quite a bit Coming up, Mel Showers looks back on the biggest stories he's ever covered. The lynching of Michael Donald and natural disasters our area will never forget. Greetings from Indiana, Mel Showers. 50 years, congratulations on retirement. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being among the first because what you started in 1969 really laid the groundwork for people like myself to be able to pursue a career in this field. And if I'm able to have just a quarter of the career that you've had, it'll be a good one. Congratulations, enjoy your retirement, well deserved. Welcome back everyone. After five decades at WKRG, there are a few stories that stand out above the rest. Mel discusses some of the biggest stories that he's covered during his 50 year career. From hurricanes, to politics, to even lynchings, Mel has covered it all. Mel Showers had been on the job as a reporter at WKRG for about five years when a massive storm hit. Hurricane Frederick, you can, you can never forget that. Whew. Long lines for gas, food and ice, power scarce. News Center 5 had to broadcast from outside the studio. Reporters worked long hours and long days and there was no relief at home. I lived at that time near downtown Mobile and my, in my house, we went six weeks without electricity. That was a major problem, but we got through it. More major hurricanes would follow over the years and the nation's biggest man-made disaster in 2010. Mel covered courts in the 1980s and reported on a series of trials that saw several mobile leaders sent to prison. I saw a lot of those corruption trials and we had a period there where two of our city commissioners were actually sent to jail and county commissioner or two had that same 
predicament. Mel also covered his fair share of political stories. He says the biggest was in 1985 when Mobile's government changed to a mayor council format with council members elected by district. That allowed three blacks to be on the city council. Before that, the three positions were elected at large and there was impossible for a black person to be elected at large at that time in Mobile County. But Mel says there's no doubt what was the biggest story he covered over 50 years. That's one of the things that, uh, one of the stories that affected me quite a bit. Teenager Michael Donald was killed by the KKK. His body hung from a tree. That supposedly it was the last lynching in the United States of America it was right here in Mobile, Alabama, 1981. Mel was on the scene the morning the body was found. I'm getting the call that there, there's a body hanging from a tree on Herndon Avenue. You need to get over there. Sure enough, there was a body hanging from a tree on Herndon Avenue. Mel covered the mistrial of a black man for killing a Birmingham police officer. That prompted the Klan's revenge killing of a random black man, Michael Donald. He also covered the eventual trial of the Klan members involved. And 16 years after the crime, Mel witnessed the end of the story, the execution of Henry Hayes. When I walked into the uh, electrocution chamber, he saw me, he knew me from TV. This Ku Klux Klansman did this for, to me. And I, I was no further than from here to where you are from the electric chair where he was about to be put to death. Now look, I'm, I'm not in love with watching any human being be killed, uh, but I was able to accept that particular death because of what he did to an innocent young teenager who was just walking home from the store. And what they did to him made me able to watch that execution without any problem whatsoever in my heart. Uh, ordinarily, that would have bothered me, but that didn't bother me that night. If I can do it, then anyone can do it. That's for sure. We journey back in time with Mel Showers, learn about his humble beginnings as a boy from the Bottom community, and how his mother refused to let him and his siblings see themselves as second-class citizens in the heart of a segregated South. And Mel's family flew out from Dallas to see his last full day here at WKRG News 5. We asked his grandkids one important question. What do you think about your grandpa? He's very, very, very cool. <laughs> he is, absolutely. That's what everybody else thinks, too. What about you? You want to say anything about your grandpa? My grandfather is... I want to hear this. Yeah, I want to hear this, too. He's amazing. <laughs> What about you? <laughs> uh, this is this cra This is crazy. I heard that this is 50 years you've been doing this. So yes. It's a long time. It is. You can see the full six-minute video on our WKRG Facebook page. Now that you know about Mel Shower's broadcasting career, it's time to take a look at his life. How he went from a young boy from the bottom community to a legendary broadcaster. This is Dr. King Avenue. See, we haven't made any turns. Traveling the streets of Mobile. There's a Catholic cemetery to your left. With Mel Showers. Where most Catholics are buried in Mobile. Is a special treat. That's where I get my hair cut, right over there. Through the eyes of a man who's seen a lot of change. This is central campus of Bishop State Community College. This is where I went to high school, Roseanne. We traveled down Dr. King Avenue. Which used to be Davis Avenue. Absorbing invaluable. It used to be the economic heart of Mobile's black community. Nuggets of history. This is where my wife went to school. The most pure heart of Mary. To understand Mel, we end up where his life began. Roseanne Haven, this is the bottom. The city, you can't go any further. If you went farther to the north here, you would be in dead swamp. It's 100% swamp. And when I was a little boy, this is where we used to spend a lot of our time exploring. The Bottom, an all-black neighborhood about a mile west of downtown Mobile. Gone are Mel's elementary school and homes where good people lived. The Bottom has produced lawyers, educators, 
other professionals, and the bottom has also produced a news anchorman. After military service in 1969, 21-year-old Dees was brought here to the USA Medical Center by his brother. Mel began his broadcasting career, overcoming critics. Those early years when the hate mail would come in, not quite used to and not quite ready for a person of my complexion to hit that air, but I kept smiling. In 2015, his mother watched him take his place in the Alabama Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame. I don't deserve this, but I'm not giving it back. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Annie Showers passed in 2017, but Mel hears her words very clearly. You might be from the bottom, but you don't have to act like it. <laughs> her point, despite negative perceptions, you don't have to act in the manner people expect of you. In her opinion, we were not colored folks, second-class citizens. We were first-class citizens as far as she was concerned. Mrs. Showers refused to allow her children to use colored restrooms or drink from colored water fountains. We would walk from here into downtown Mobile, and my mother would tr try to make sure that we used the restroom, drank water, and what have you, before we went downtown. She also refused to let them use the side colored entrance at the Sanger, the same theater where Mel receives awards today. I'm Mel Showers, thank you. A symbol of how he continues to inspire others, black and white, to pursue their dreams in his humble and sincere fashion. They probably are saying to themselves, well, if he can do it, I can do it. And that's true. If I can do it, then anyone can do it. That's for sure. How many times have we heard him say that? <laughs> and when News 5 returns, the legend Mel Showers will join us to talk about what he plans to do next. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Well, Mel Showers, congratulations on your recent retirement after almost five decades on, at Channel 5. You've certainly been uh, just the, the person that everybody knows whenever they turn on the news. Uh, certainly a good friend of law enforcement and good luck to you. Everybody loves Mel, and yeah. everybody right now, everybody wants to know what he's going to do in retirement. So many people have asked me, and I say, whatever he wants. <laughs> so what do you want to do? That's a great attitude. Yeah. Well, earlier in your broadcast here, you saw my son yeah. and my grandsons all come here, surprising me from Dallas, Texas. They flew in this afternoon just for my final broadcast. I was very honored and very surprised. Well, I will be living with him mm -hmm. in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he has this big place out there that I guess he wants me, me to help maintain it. <laughs> Put mold, you to work. Mold, yeah, mold, right. mow the grass and <laughs> do all that. But uh, I will be living with him in Dallas, Texas. And you may not see the end of me because I live in Dallas, Texas. The uh, headquarters of our parent state, our, our company Next is time. in Mm -hmm. Dallas, Texas, and I may be traveling to the Next Star headquarters yeah. to do a report or two every now and then. Not often because I'm retired. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like to well, say semi retired. Yeah, we're going to no. bring you back to Mobile, Mel, for sure, a couple of times. I'm thinking well, Mardi Gras and some other events. And you know, yes. you mentioned Next Star. We had our corporate president here today, gave uh -huh. you an award. You've been recognized very... by the city, the state. At the United States Capitol today, the uh, National Association of Black Journalists. I mean, what a month it's been for you. I have been so humbled, and thanks to you and Roseanne, for putting together all of those old reports back when I had hair. <laughs> I had lots of hair. And if, if nothing else, that proves to people I did have hair at one time. <laughs> that was so much fun going through all of that footage. But something that has struck me is that you have stayed the same very true you very think? real <laughs> very humble and uh, the viewers could always sense that and they've always loved you all these years and uh, there's more to come from Mel Showers we'll we're not going to let you go too far <laughs> no. and I know we're down we'll and thanks to all the viewers thanks to all of you all right join us tonight at 10. see you then